are going to go through how to update and personalize the travel request funnel pages that are available to you in your account. You're going to get to it by from the dashboard, click on sites. <clears throat> You'll automatically come to the funnel um, dashboard and you're going to click on the first folder, which is Opus Step 1. And this step one is the actual travel request funnel. We already walked through each of the pages from an action perspective and what your clients are going to see. But now what we want to do is modify each of the pages and personalize the page just for your particular travel business. So what to let me just explain to you sort of how funnel pages work. This explanation is going to hold true every single time you're working with a funnel inside of the application. So um, the first thing is, is that you have a funnel, which are a collection of pages that you will set up and they're called steps. And so before we go into each of the steps, we want to make sure that you actually set up this, uh, this content that's here. These are the steps. You'll have four steps that are already set, um, created for you. Stats. <clears throat> Are as the funnel is um, live and you've published it and that things are working, these are just the metrics in terms of how many people have visited it, how many opt ins, and if you have any funnels that have products on it, it'll also track your sales and earnings per page. You can always reset your um, stats when you're on here. So while you're in testing, you can always reset them. And to do that, like you can see, these are the number of visits that I've had, the number of people have actually submitted, how many, um, you know, discovery calls that have been booked from here, and then how many people actually reached the confirmation. To reset the um, stats, you can just hit the reset, reset button. And then if you want to understand the stats, you can click on the understand stats uh, link and it'll take you to an explanation of what all each of the stats are and what they mean. We'll be going over stats a lot more when we get to step five, which is the results. Um, but again, if you want to reset, all you have to do is click reset, delete. It'll, you'll get this warning recently around won't get deleted. So we'll just go ahead and delete that. So it'll start fresh. <coughs> Sales. This particular funnel doesn't have any products associated with it. So this is not going to be applicable for this funnel. When we get into um, later steps in the workflows, you'll see that there will be some uh, funnels that have particularly group pages and when you're selling your actual trips. Settings is where I really want you to make sure that you set up uh, your uh, particulars associated with your business here. Uh, you can keep the name of this here and you just want to make sure that your uh, funnel is associated with the domain as a part of your onboarding we should have select created a subdomain for your account and that domain that should be selected here should be available for you to select here if for some reason you don't have a domain that's selected please reach out to us so that we can walk you through on how to get that set up because again it should have been part of your onboarding so you'll select the domain here and then um, this is the path. Uh, you can keep this path called Get Travel Request. You can rename it if you want to. I suggest you uh, keep it so that uh, it's pretty simple. But again, you do have the right to rename it to whatever you want. If you are doing any sort of Facebook advertising, you have Google Analytic code. This is where you're going to put that header code here. This is tracking code for you to put your Facebook pixel, your Google Analytics, pick your Pinterest, whatever analytical code that you have for tracking purposes, you'll want to add that here to all to your settings page. Um, and then um, you can keep image optimization on and GDPR compliant fonts if that's something that's important to you. You can enable that. And then what you want to do is just make sure that you save so that your settings are saved. These are one-time setting setups that you have to do. You should go through these setups every single time you create a new funnel or are working with a new funnel, make sure that the settings are set. Just also, when it comes to your actual URL, you never really want to use the URL that's at this level, which is right here. You want to use 
this URL. So to get that URL, you'll just make sure that you're gonna click this little um, box with the arrow out, and that's gonna allow you to actually view the live page of this. So you see that the name of this is demo, dot online travel boss dot com forward slash get travel request. So if you change that in the settings, it's going to be whatever. And then this is the URL that you're going to actually want to make sure that you hand out to the public. This is your public facing URL. All right. So now that you've edited your settings, now what we want to do is we want to make sure that you um, go through each one of these pages and you edit and personalize each page. To do that, you'll click on the first page and click on edit. Key things on this first page that you'll want to make sure that you edit is, um, I just want to explain to you kind of the layers that are designed in this page. If you click on this uh, stack of papers, which is layers, this will show you how the page is designed. And there's three major sections that are designed in this um, funnel, this funnel page. It's a company header, a company footer, and the body. The company header is this section right here. This is standard pretty much in every funnel that we've created for you. And it's using what's called a global section. And you can see that right here because it says global. What a global section is, is, is that it's used wherever, like you make a change and it's going to show up on all pages that are using that global section. So we've already designed this global section to pull in your custom value of your local URL. If for some reason your logo is not showing up, that means that your custom value logo URL doesn't have your URL. So we'll want to make sure that that's um, and in the previous training in this module, I showed you how to update custom values and you'll want to refer to that to get this correct. You won't do that here. You'll actually do that in settings. So you want to make sure that your logo is pulling in. I want you to scroll down and then also make sure that your logo is showing up here and that you leave these items the same because it's pulling in your location's phone number, email, its address, and its name. Your terms and your privacy policy are also automatically pulling in as well based on your custom values associated with your business. So there's really not much you need to do to change the header and footer except for maybe you want the background color to be something else. So let's talk about how you change background colors and all of that. So let's say you want the background, this background color for this header is white and you want that to be something else. So as long as your, your cursor, you've clicked into this header, you can also see that it's purple and it says global company header. On the right hand side are the properties for you to change something. You can change, if you just go down each one of these things, you can change any and customize any one of this. You can change the margin, you can change the background color, you can change that to red, you can change that to whatever color you want. If you want to change a color and it's not here, all you have to do is click on add custom color and then add the hex code associated with that color. We're going to leave that white. You can um, make a box shadow and these features and properties again are going to be the same throughout. So once I explain them, they're going to be applicable for everything. You can do a box shadow, which will actually sort of make this section a little upraised. Um, <clears throat> not really any necessary to do uh, sticky. You can add videos to your section backgrounds. If you want to do a video or an image, you just, if you select image and then you go to this little icon, this little graphic here, it'll bring up your media library and then you can add an image on the background. One of the things that you can do from an image perspective, these are images that I've uploaded. You can also search, click on my media and then go to unsplash and then search. Let's say we want to look for an ocean, which is one of my favorite backgrounds. Then you can see all the unsplash. You also can, these are all royalty free. You can also search Pixabay and then get, um, 
images from there. So here I've changed the banner, my header banner to have this background image of an ocean with my logo. This doesn't happen to look so hot with my logo because my logo is transparent. But one of the things that you can do is, is you can make the background image a little bit opaque by selecting this feature called background image opacity. Opacity, I think that's how you pronounce it. Opacity, opacity. Um, but this just makes it fade. So you can do a heavy fade. You can do a medium fade, half fade. Um, a light fade. So that actually lets my logo pop out a little bit better. So that's something that you can do. You can do that actually in any element, add a background image to any element and do that kind of thing. So um, that's just to let you know how to do that. So on this page, one of the things that you're going to want to also updo, update is the video. You'll either want to make this a video with your own video or you're going to want to actually replace it with an image or whatever you've decided to be your communication process for how you do your travel request. To change out the video, just click on the video that's here. And then in this right hand video type, we've got several different video options. We upload all of our videos to YouTube. You can upload to YouTube, you can upload to Vimeo, Wistia. You can embed a specific code. Um, I use Loom, and so I'm just gonna show you really quick in Loom. Um, I, uh, I also use YouTube and I use Loom. So let's say I have a Loom that I've uploaded. You can just click on any video. <clears throat> and then when you're in Loom and you wanna share and get the Im embed code, you just click on embed and then copy that code. And then you can use that code in the section here. Um, and then that would actually embed the video code here. That will be one of the things I'm going to just keep this to YouTube because again, all of our stuff is on YouTube. Then you can add bullets. You can delete these bullets or you can add bullets. Let's say you want to add, um, let's say you don't want bullets and you just want text. I hit this plus sign and then you've got this idea of elements and you can add any of these element types that you want here. This is pretty much text. So you could add paragraph bullets, headline, you could add whatever you want. X out of here and then to edit any of these bullets, you just double click inside of them and you start typing whatever text you want to type in here. You can change the font color of the bullets again by going over to the right hand side and then the color options here this represents this says typography that means the font you can select an icon to go in front of a bullet so let's say i want this to be the peace sign i've changed that and all the bullets are peace signs so you can change the icon for your bullets you can change the color of the text you can change the icon text you can change if you bold any of the text in here. So let's say I want this to be bolded. I can change that bold color and make that blue. Um, actually, I think I'm in icon color. Sorry, we're going to leave that, make that red. And we're going to change the icon color to the bold to be blue. You can change if you italicize anything. So let's say I want this to be italicized and I highlight it and hit the I. Here, I can make that italic color a different color as well. That's actually underlined, so I can change that. And the italic color is here. Um, underline text. So if I underline any word here, I can also change the color of the underlying text. So you really have the ability to change any part of the text in the way that the text looks. You can change that by the properties on the side. Margins are really just the margins that are around. So this is going to be above, below. This is going to be inside. So if I want this to be, let's say, 30, and then change that to 30, that's going to be the padding inside of this element. And then that's pretty much what you can do for any of the text uh, changes. Now, this is a button. You can change the, we're going to start from the top. You can change the button color to any color that you want. 
you can change, scroll down, you can change the spacing between. This just makes the word, the letters wider. You can change the font size. You can make that smaller. You can have it, you can have your subtext. I'll show you where you'll meant. So let's say you want that to be eight. You can change the font type to be heading or context. Here you can add an icon to go in front of it as well. So you can do an icon in front and then you can also do an icon in back. So these are all kind of cool things that you can do. You can change the color of the text. So if you want that text to be black, you can change the subtext. You can have the subtext be a different color as well. So here, change the padding. This is what the text is actually reading here. But if you want more subtext, you can just add that here right below in terms of the text options. And then you'll just want to keep the link to next steps. You'll want to make sure that that stays next step because that's going to actually be where it's going. So we're going to change this to black so you can actually see it. And we made that font really small. So we're going to make this a little bit bigger. We're going to make that 18. We're going to make this 20 so you can actually see it. So you see that um, here. And then we're going to change the letter spacing to normal. And then you can see that you can make your button. I kind of like this jumping button. And that's going to be on the advanced tab here. This is actually the, the design of the button style. So you can um, make the button full width or you can make it fluid. We have it set to fluid here. Um, the dancing button type is a button animation to find it bounce. So here it's called a button effect. So you can make it glow. You can make it elevate. You can make it wobble <laughs> and this, when you save it, it will actually do all of that. So I like the bounce. We're not going to save this because this is my actually template. I should have uh, did a copy of it. So <clears throat> that's how you modify any page um, and the elements of a page. You can also add additional content to the page. Let's say you want to add a new row. You can just add, click on rows. And let's say you want to have a one row up here. You can add that and add elements. Um, add a heading to that. You really can do whatever you want to the page as you want. If you want the background of this whole section to have an image, you can do that as well too. So you'll just um, here on this section, let's go to layers and let's just make sure we're on this one here. And we're going to edit. And let's say we want a whole image here. I'm going to do background and I'm going to make that to be an ombre color and you can see you've changed the um, that sections and that is the this first row here so um, you really have the flexibility to do let's say you don't want you don't want to add you don't want this column you don't have a signature item and you want to delete it just highlight it make sure here and then um, you can tell that that's the whole section and then click X and then you deleted that whole section. So you can keep it, you can delete it, you can add more, you can do whatever you want. We want you to go through each one of the pages and customize the pages for yourself. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna, um, we're gonna leave this because I don't want to save these changes, um, but always make sure to save your changes as you go so you don't lose your work. So we're going to the second page here, and this is the submit uh, travel request. This is the, um, the, the page where your actual form is going to come in and your client's going to fill out the form. If for some reason you've customized your travel request and you've made a copy of the survey that we did and you're not using the template, you're going to want to make sure that you connect your revised, uh, your personal personalized survey copy um, inside of this funnel page. And to do that, 
let's say you created your own, you'll just click on this white space, which is here and to the right, you see you've got the survey that comes up. What you'll do is you will just then select your survey. So we, um, I talked about making sure that you put the name of your survey, um, either your initials, your name, or your business name in the survey so you can find it. But all that you need to do is navigate to the survey that you've modified and created and customized, and then it'll pull it in here. Things to note when it comes to this page that you may want to change is you may want to change your survey if you customize your survey. You may also want to change this background. So just click on this area of the background and then here you can change that background image again to whatever image you want to use. So that's something to note for the step two page that you'll want to change. And then the step three page that you want to change is same thing. If you want to change, um, if you want to change any of the text that's here in terms of what you want to call this, um, any of the instructions here, you can change that. This is already pulling in your discovery call calendar. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's really just any text that you want to change here. And then step four here, similarly to step one page, you're going to want to add your personalized video here, a link to your personalized vi video. If you're doing, if you don't want a video, if you want, you know, if you don't have a button, you know, you can just delete that. You just click on the button and click delete. So again, you just want to personalize every single one of the pages once you've saved all of them and you're okay with them, the last step that you're going to want to do is click publish so that it publishes the final version out to the internet. Let me know if you have any questions, but that is how you personalize your um, website. We would love to see your pages inside of our Facebook group and inside of our community. So go ahead and once you're done, go ahead and have the community test your, uh, your funnel for you and make sure that everything is working um, and that is all. Last step is after you do a publish is you always want to go through testing. You want to actually go through and make sure that every page is rendering the way that you want to. Next lesson, I'll show you how to actually do your own test and that will conclude uh, this training. Talk to you in the next lesson.